Welcome back. Time for another story. A few shout outs first. We have to just say this is the second time we're doing this this evening. Due to my technical support, we have to all say thank you to Megan. She filled me upside down first time. Some of you might have found that more interesting, mind you. Right, Alfie, Freddie, Dottie, hi. Hope you're having fun at home. Hope you've enjoyed the sunshine today, kids. Obviously in your back garden, social distancing. Henry, Grace and Hannah. Grace, there's no pussycat today, unfortunately. She's outside enjoying the sun. Uh, Brooke, Leah, little George. Hope you're still listening. And Jaden, I love the fact that you're enjoying it. Right, guys, today's story, thanks to Mr. Williams again. Miss Conceit, the human work of art. She is looking beautiful. Miss Conceit thought of herself as a work of art, though with her electric blue boots, orange hat, yellow dress, flowing pink scarf, and black and white tights, she looked more like a licorice all sorts. She taught art at a school that was the definition of ordinary, humdrum high. The school was colourless, except for one room, the art room. That was an explosion of colour as Miss Conceit had made it a shrine to herself. Pictures of her adorned the walls. The teacher had humbly added herself into the most famous paintings of all time. There she was as Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. And as Vermeer's girl with a pearl earring. Callow's self-portrait with thorn necklace and hummingbird now had Miss Conceit's face staring back at you. Botticelli's The Birth of Venus was renamed The Birth of Miss Conceit. One of Georgia O'Keeffe's flowers suddenly had Miss Conceit's face right at the centre of it. She became bald for Edvard Munch's The Scream. Vincent van Gogh's famous self-portrait with a bandage on his ear became a portrait of Miss Conceit with a plaster on her ear. Lempicka's Tamara in a green Bugatti was reimagined as Miss Conceit in a brown mini. Perhaps most startling of all was Miss Conceit's edition of herself surfing Hokusai's iconic The Great Wave. In the centre of the classroom stood a larger than life-size sculpture. It was Michelangelo's David, but now it had her face chiselled into it and was renamed Miss Conceit's Miss Conceit. All that the children were allowed to paint was her. This she would make them do over and over again until they finally captured her, as she called it, immense at her beautifulness. Her poor pupils missed break time and lunch time, had to stay behind for hours after school and even missed weekends until these artworks of herself met her approval. It was as if she were an Egyptian pharaoh and they were her slaves working night and day to immortalise her. One day there was an announcement on the television news of a nationwide children's art contest. Every school in the country was invited to take part in the children's art competition knockout, or CAC for short. Miss Conceit was in the staff room when she saw the news. She was so thrilled she spat her coffee all over the headmaster, Mr Dower, who was quietly getting on with his crossword. Splurt! Yuck! Yes! exclaimed Miss Conceit. She began skipping around the staff room. Da -de -dum -de -dum -de -da. Soon everyone at Humdrum High knew how thrilled she was. She cartwheeled down the corridor. She danced in the dining hall. She limboed in the library. She pogoed in the playground. She high kicked in the history classroom. She strutted around the science block. She fox trotted on the football pitch. She cha cha around the climbing frame and she tiptoed through the toilets. Miss Conceit knew this competition could be the making of her. Now she wouldn't just be a legend in her own school. The whole world would know who she was. Miss Conceit would finally be heralded as the greatest art teacher who ever lived. Humdrum High could be demolished and replaced by a giant golden statue of her. The rules of the CAC competition were simple. Children from each school had to work together to create a piece of art. It could be a painting or a sculpture or whatever they choose. The winning piece would be displayed in the gallery of great and good art, or Gaga for short. So, on the morning that the competition was announced, Miss Conceit waltzed onto the stage at Humdrum High Assembly. Children, it is I, your humblest art teacher, Miss Conceit 
she began. There were groans from some of the kids in the school. Ugh. They didn't believe a word of it. She just pretended to be humble, as people often do. Miss Conceit was as humble as a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Others simply yawned. The teacher was such a bum-numbing bore, after all. As you may have witnessed on your televisual books this very morning, she continued, a school art contestion has been announcemented. The children's art competition knockout, or for short, CAC. <laughs> All the kids were laughing now, though Miss Conceit had no idea why. The prize is not as money or fame, both of which, as you know, I shun. Another groan from the kids. Ugh. For me, the greatmentest prize is posterity, a place in Gaga. Again, Miss Seat had no idea why that was so funny. Now, I want every single one of you inspirationable, magnificent, fundamental children to be a part of this, to make me, I mean to make humdrum high, celebrated mentated on every corner of this planet that we do call Earth. The kids were not happy. This was yet more work for them. Do we have to? Not fair. She's always making us do extra work. It's all about her. Can't she just disappear up her own bottom? I would rather eat my sock. Wonderment, wonderment, called the teacher, as if they had all been cheering her. Now, I want you, the kids, to shout out and tellish me what you think our school's work of ultimate should be. A ripple of excitement passed through the school hall. This seemed like a marvellous opportunity to be naughty. Best of all, if all the kids were naughty, the teacher wouldn't be able to punish them. You can't put the whole school in detention. How about a sculpture of a giant bogey made entirely of snot? Shouted a voice from the back. Ha ha ha! Miss Conceit's face turned sour. Propairment! Suggestiments only, please. No, no, no! Someone called from the middle of the sea of naughtiness. How about we make a model of the school using only foot cheese? Ha ha ha! That is not in the least bit funnelous. I know, I know, hollered a voice from somewhere, though nobody could be sure of where exactly. We should all paint a ginormous bottom burp in different shades of brown. You are not taking this seriously. This is art. The art teacher was not in the least bit amused. Even if every single person in the hall was, even her fellow teachers were chortling away, they found her deeply annoying too. Settlement down, please, shouted the teacher. Eventually, order was restored. Good, good. Now I think we've had quite enough mint of silly suggestibles. So I, Miss Conceit, your humble most art teacher, will decideable the work of artiment will be of... Miss Conceit left a long pause for dramatic effect. Me! What a colossal surprise, shouted the kids. Even the stern-faced Mr Dow, who'd been soaked in the staff room, added his voice to the chorus of disapproval. What a load of poopy pop pops, was his verdict, as he mopped the last bits of Miss Conceit's coffee out of his ear. Of course, this is what the art teacher had intended all along for the artwork to be of her. Fabulosity that is settled then, we will ass assemblement in the ground of play, every break time and every lunch time, until it is finishment. Ugh, groaned the children. Humdrum high, togetherment we will reach for the stars. With that, the teacher performed a little spin. The bell rang for the first lesson of the day, and all the children began filing out. Unsure of what to do after her little spin, Miss Conceit struck a pro pose and stood as still as a statue. That was a strange premonition of what was to come. After all the fun and games in assembly, at the first break time the children were set to work. Miss Conceit directed them all from a little wooden plinth in the centre of the playground. The work of art will be made out of papier-mâché announced Miss Conceit. Of course, she said papier in a mock French accent, even though she could have quite easily just called it paper. The teacher did the same when pronouncing cul-de-sac, liaison, 
and even creme. It was just one of the things that made her perhaps the most irritating person on the planet. Well, well, I mean, you will all work together, Mint, to produce a giant papier mache sculpture of me, your most beloved art teacher, Miss Conceit. She had assembled everything the children needed. There were paints and brushes, a tall bundle of old newspapers, a roll of chicken wire and a huge bucket of wallpaper paste. Is simple, Mint, children. You have made papier-mâché models thousands of times before. I mean, you will build them and up the model and then we, you, will paint it. Now come on, choppity-chop, the children groaned. Oh, they were forced to work all through break time and lunch time and after school until it grew dark. This went on for days, weeks and months. Miss Conceit rejected all their work. No, no and no, she would shout. You have not captured my beautiosity. Again, again. Needless to say, the children had soon had enough and began hatching a secret plan to deal with their art teacher once and for all. It all began, as most secret plans did, with Alexina, the tall, thin, flame-haired girl who was widely regarded as the naughtiest kid at Humdrum High. Miss, began the girl one lunchtime, months after they'd begun to work on the piece for the cat competition. Yes, now, um, don't tell me, replied the teacher, as she preened herself. I pride myself on remembermenting the name of every single child at Humdrum High. Colin? No, replied the girl. Trevor? No. Mohammed? No, it's Alexina. Oh yes, of course. It's very similarish sounding to Mohammed. Pray, continue more. Thank you, miss, smirked the girl. Well, us kids were thinking, we just can't get this paper statue of you right. We've tried again and again and again. And again, added the teacher. That's because we're making the base out of chicken wire. But chicken wire is never going to do justice to your immense mental beautiliciousness. Truement, truement, mused Miss Conceit. Mostest truement. It would be much more lifelike if we could use you as the base. Alexina glared at the other children. No one could snigger or they'd give the game away. Meanwhile, a look of concern crossed Conceit's face as she pondered this plan. Me? Yes, you, replied the girl. Luckily for the children, the art teacher's vanity got the better of her. That is a splendiferous idea, she cooed, clasping her hands together in anticipation. Let's turn me into a work of art. With obvious delight, the kids all began tearing off more strips of newspaper before dunking them in the bucket of wallpaper paste. Next, they eagerly crowded around their art teacher, ready to begin. Wait, called out the teacher. No, hissed Alexina. We've been rumbled. I need to stragment a pose. The teacher began trying out a number of her special poses. First, there was holding your hands together in a prayer, a portrait of goodness. Then, there was looking off into the distance, shielding your eyes from the glare of the sun, as if staring into the future. Next, the teacher pretended to think a deep thought by resting her hand on her chin. But none of these seemed right. Children, what pose do you think best captures my humbleosity? The kids all scratched their heads in thought. I have an idea, exclaimed Alexina. Yes, Colin, I mean Trevor, I mean Mohammed, Dave, that's it, Dave. What could be humbler than a squat? A squat? What a splendiferous idea of mine! With that, the teacher slowly brought herself down to squat. The pose made it look as if she were about to do a dirty business in a hole in the ground. After a few moments, Miss Conceit remarked, Oh, it's not very comfortable. We will be as quick as we can, replied Alexina, chivying all the other children along. And as fast as they could, the kids of Humdrum High began splatting their art teacher with strips of newspaper soaked in wallpaper paste. Oh, oh, oh! cried the teacher each time a new piece of sodden paper hit her. Soon, Miss Conceit was covered from head to toe. 
I want this papier mache statue of me to be gigantical, she announced, her voice somewhat muffled by the gloopy paper, to show that I'm a giant among teachers, and I mean that humbly. Of course you do, replied Alexina. All you want is to be adored for all eternity. Exactly! What could be humbler than that? Come on, gang, let's get this finished once and for all. Splat, splot, splut. The statue grew bigger and bigger and bigger until it was as tall as the school building itself. The sun was shining that day, which meant that the wallpaper paste, which was really nothing more than watery glue, dried fast. Now, make sure the statue captures both my innermost and outermost beautiosity. Well, mainly my outermost one, came a muffled voice from somewhere under all this papier-mâché. Now the fun could really start. Using ladders borrowed from the caretaker, the children began painting the statue. When it came to the face, Alexina ensured the expression was one of straining, so it looked as if the teacher really were, for want of a more polite expression, laying a chocolate egg. By the time the bell rang for the end of lunch, the artwork was finally finished. How do I look? came an extremely muffled voice from inside. Beautiful! replied the children in unison. Perfect! I, I mean we, will win the contestion. I will be immortalised in Gaga. Now, all I need is to get out of here. Hang on, hang on, I'm trapped. No! I'm sorry, miss, replied Alexina. We have lessons to get to, we mustn't be late. Tee, <laughs> sniggered the kids. Instead of going straight to a lesson, Alexina swung by the headmaster's office. Rat tat tat. Just one moment, called Mr. Dow, quickly hiding his jigsaw, pu jigsaw puzzle under his desk. Come in. Thank you, sir. You'll be pleased to know the artwork for the CAC competition thing is finally finished. At last. This saga has been going on for weeks. Months, sir. Has it really? Well, now it's done. That should shut up Miss Cassie for a while. Very good, child. I will make sure it's collected at once. Then we can use the playground again. Thank you, sir. Now run along to your lesson. Well, don't run. Just walk purposefully. Very good, sir. As soon as she left the room, Mr. Dow went straight back to his jigsaw puzzle. What Alexina hadn't told him, of course, was that Miss Conceit was still inside the artwork. All the kids rushed to the windows of their classrooms when they heard a huge truck driving into the playground. The statue was loaded onto the back of the truck before being driven off. Brum! <laughs> the children sniggered as it disappeared through the school gates. The kids in Alexina's class all patted her on the back, which made her glow with pride. A week later, the winner of the nationwide art competition was announced on television. The entire school gathered in the hall to watch. The artwork that will be put on permanent display in Gaga is... The presenter paused for dramatic effect. Squatting art teacher by the children of Humdrum High. Everyone cheered, hooray! No one louder than Alexina. Even Mr. Dower did a little skip and a jump. Hooray! There was one voice that remained unusually silent. Miss Conceit. The teacher had been missing for a number of days now. Then days became weeks, weeks became months, and months became years. What only the children of Humdrum High knew was that their art teacher was encased in her own statue. So, if your school ever takes you on a visit to the Great and Good Gallery, or Gaga, make sure you put your ear up next to the statue of the CAC award-winning squatting art teacher by the children of Humdrum High. You might just hear a muffled voice from the inside saying, Miss Conceit's dream had come true. The teacher was a work of art, a giant pooping one. There you go, guys. Right, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Mr. Williams again, and we will see you all tomorrow. Stay safe, look after each other, and be kind. Bye-bye.